Hello and welcome to Country with Celine. On today's episode, we have a special guest who recently released his new single, Take a Chance. Give it up for Matt Morrison. Well, she's sitting next to me with a drink in her hand, gun in the other in her hand, the wind and I love her so much that I'm a wanted babe. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm very well. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for asking. Okay, now take a chance. A new single of yours was released last week. How are you feeling about that? Uh, pretty good, actually. I literally just looked at the numbers a little earlier today, and that made me happy. So you know, I just I'm happy that it's being streamed. I'm happy that people are liking it, and I'm happy. I'm getting a lot of like direct feedback too. So I'm feeling good. Let's just put it that way. So baby, take a chance. Open up your heart and grab my hand. Yeah, that was yeah. an awesome song. I gave it a listen. I love it, and I can't wait to hear more from you. Thank you. <laughs> You're no problem. Um, now, 2020, just to go back a bit here, that was a really different year, to say the least. And I mean, it really put a lot of things on hold for a lot of people, especially for artists like you in the music business. Mm -hmm. So now looking at it from a positive uh, side, what's something that you really took out of it? Were you able to make more music, improve something? Yeah, you know what? Like, okay, well, I, to, to be honest, 2020, it was difficult. The biggest issue I had with it personally, and I can't speak for everyone in the industry, but me and my band, like we truly love record, uh, not recording, sorry, uh, performing. It's just, we like to play. You know, half the time we're up there for us, not even for the crowd. Like, we're just having a good time. So that sucked, I'll be honest. But uh, luckily, we were still able to rehearse up until, you know, a, a couple months ago when we, everything got locked down again. So at least we were able to rehearse through most of 2020. We still got to play. We still got to write music. So we did a lot of that. So I, I am grateful for that. But yeah, it was different. It was weird. It, it, I mean, it was weird for everybody. I can't say it was weird for just me. It was... It was 2020, I don't know what to yeah. say. <laughs> it was so strange, and especially for um, artists, like even Jason Aldean, Luke Bryan, all their concerts got canceled because yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you go to a concert to be surrounded by like thousands of people yeah. that the artists perform in front of, right? So it's so different. 2020 was such a different um, type of show. Hopefully 2021 will be a lot better, but who's to say, honestly, yeah. right? um but is there any um album are you working on any album in the near future any you know what i so i was gonna actually the plan was to release one this year but this was obviously before all this happened so the the music's pretty much ready i mean we're still tweaking little things you're never really finished until you just walk away from it so i mean there is an album the short answer, yes. I just, I don't know when it's going to be released yet. Kind of just waiting for the world to open back up and see what happens. Oh, I'm sure a lot of fans are going to be happy to hear that. I hope so, yeah. I <laughs> hope so. Um, okay, now, what really drove your passion um, to pursue country music? Was it something that you knew you always wanted to do? Or was there a moment in your life where you're like, hmm, you know what? I'm going to take a chance and go down this road. Uh, I, it wasn't always country, to be honest. I mean, I grew up in a little town, like I, I hate saying it's so stereotypical, but like, you know, the country lifestyle, like I have always, that's been me, but I never thought I'd do country music, uh, only because I've never, I just never really related to it. But I, when I started writing music, you know, however long ago that was now, uh, it was either, it was kind of like a country rockish sound, which is kind of like what I still have. So it was kind of, do I go rock or do I go country? Because which one I, whatever I do, I got to commit. And I just kind of chose country. And that's pretty much how it went. You definitely have a rock type of voice too. I yeah, I honestly, thank that. you. I appreciate that. Because I think I do too, but I, people are like, nah. And I'm like, I don't know. Like, I can't no, figure no, it out. You have that. Even just talking to you like this, I can completely hear it. Yeah, I got that. Ra I have a raspy voice. Everyone thinks I'm like, something wrong with me but that's just how i talk it's just the way i sound <laughs> it's all good. um but you certainly chose the right path getting involved with um music and you're no rookie to the spotlight i mean you've opened up for um country singers such as george canyon jojo mason aaron pritchett so just to name a few big names yeah how experience is like 
Honestly, uh, I was asked this not too long ago, and uh, the same answer every time, and it, it's weird. You don't realize what you're doing while you're doing it. Does that make sense? Like, you know, I'm opening up for whoever it is, and you, you're so focused on putting on the performance that you don't really realize what you're doing until afterwards you're like, oh, holy crap, I just... Then you're like, wow, that just happened, right? But up until that point, you don't think about it that way. You just do like, what you got to do. Yeah, it's like such a surreal feeling. That's like if I was to yeah. introduce, um, not introduce, um, interview like a hockey player. Like I'd be like, oh my God, you know, like at first. Like, yeah. And then I, I understand where you're coming from with that. Yeah. It's awesome. In the moment. In the moment, you got to be professional, right? So you're not thinking, but then afterwards, you're like, oh, okay, now I could now I could fan up all I want. Like it's just I done. Can fan girl, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and I was also reading about you. You were the production um, for Boots and Hearts and like other music festivals. Like you were behind the scenes. I and did. You decided well, to go forward with that. What made you do that leap? That's honestly something I'm still not sure. I could guess, I could hypothesize, but I, I did that for three years. I worked with Boots and Hearts and uh, I made a lot of friends, a lot of you know people I still talk to this day, keep in contact with. And I don't know, I, I, I thought I loved being around the festival. Like that's why I kept going back. I loved devoting my time and doing it. But then like you kind of realize you know, like it, not in a fame sort of way, but I just wanted to do that. Like I wanted to play music. I mean, I'd already, sorry, I should say I'd been playing music for years prior to that, but I wanted to pursue it professionally or at least try to. So watching these people on stage, you kind of just, you know, I, I figured let's just go for it. Cause I'd rather try and fail than never try and never know. Right. So that's kind of was my thinking at the time. True. It's a damn yeah. good motto to have that. <laughs> yeah. You'll always regret things. You never. If you want to do something, you just go after it. Live. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Exactly. Like you have to live life like that. Mm -hmm. um, but since you're an artist, I'm sure you've dreamt of collaborating with other big stars. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> so, name them. Let's hear them. Oh well, there's a list, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll just narrow it down to three people. Three big ones. I mean, there's a couple of even small artists I'd love to collab with, but the three big ones I can think of off the top of my head is I've always had a thing for uh, Stapleton. I've always liked his writing style. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's just, I don't really have much to say about him. That's kind of a given. Chris Stapleton's Chris Stapleton. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of, like, I'm a big indie country fan as well, and I love Tyler Childers. Tyler Childers is a huge fan of him. He writes kind of like about working man, men and like the hard times that people fall on. So I would, that'd be a good writing session. I think, I think we'd have a lot to discuss. And thirdly, my, uh, I always wanted to write with Casey Musgraves. That was something I always wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, haven't heard much from her in the last year or so, but I, I I've always said that to people, if I had the chance to write with Casey Musgraves, cause again, she's a phenomenal songwriter. Yeah. So I would yeah. want to see what we came up with. And she has such a unique voice, too. Very, very. And she's kind of a badass. Like, she doesn't care what people think. She just does what she does. And exactly. I respect that. Exactly. I respect that. <laughs> and now, as I've mentioned um, before, like, 2020, uh, a bit of a flip-flop type of year. But, hey, 2021, all about new chances. Hopefully, it's a fresh start. And like I was saying before as well, 2020, we learned quite a bit. So mm -hmm. 2020, I feel like we should actually take what we learned from 2020 and improve in 2021. I'm yeah. saying the year so many times here. Um, but what's something that you really wish to accomplish for this year coming up? Well, I mean, uh, the thing I always think about is I hope that we get to play all the shows that were canceled. That's something that'd be great. But in terms of accomplishments, I want to get the album out. That's my plan. I mean... Part of me says we didn't release it because of, you know, the virus. But another part of me goes, maybe it was just me, you know, like maybe I'm using it as a crutch. So I want to make sure there's no excuses. Like 2021, an album is going to come out. That's my, that's my goal. I mean, I feel like you could still release an album, even given all of this, what's going on. Oh, a hundred percent. But in the beginning, we were all just, you're worried about reception because you're, you know, before this, when someone releases an album or anything, you know, it, it'll, be pretty high in the news cycle but these days as we know all the news cycle is is the pandemic and rightfully so mind mm -hmm. you but you know so 
have you ever thought about doing Zoom concerts? Because I know a lot of other artists have been like doing them. Honestly, I've thought of, I, I've done a couple actually, not concerts. I've done a couple uh, performances, let's say, like I've been on other people's shows. Yeah. Uh, I've done that. Uh, the concert, I'm not against it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not set up for it. That's pretty much what it is. So if I could get a setup, you know, proper, like a good mic for good quality sound and, you know, maybe I'm in like a very dimly lit room right now. Like I got terrible setup. So I'm not against it. Let's put it that way. I, I would, I would definitely think about it. Yeah, you should totally think about it. I think it'd be an awesome idea, but I mean, the goal is for this year to actually get to perform in front of a live audience, not cut out yes. cardboards like we saw at the Super Bowl, where yeah. it's like half and half. Yeah, none, none of that. None of that. Um, hey, speaking of the Super Bowl, real quick, who were you rooting for? The Bucks or the Chiefs? Well, here's the thing. I, I, I'll be, I'm going to be upfront, first of all, and honest. I'm not a huge football fan, but, but. I have loved the Buccaneers ever since I was a kid, strictly because they had a pirate flag as a logo. And I was like, that's awesome. So now that Brady's on the Buccaneers, everyone's like, oh, no, that's why you like the Buccaneers. I'm like, no, no, I've liked them even when they were horrible for like that 15 years. I always liked them. That's so because that, of the pirate flag. That's it. I'm honest. People are like, is it stats? I'm like, nah, it's the flag. It's the only reason. Like, I like the flag. What are you going to do? Yeah, that's. I like the Miami Dolphins. There you go. For the colors, not because of the there, there you go, right? <laughs> I feel you, but it, it's been it was crazy though. I'm I'm just quickly touch on that. Like that was unbelievable. Tom Brady from the New England Patriots to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and nobody, oh, nobody, nobody saw that coming. My cousins actually used to always make fun of me for rooting for the Buccaneers, and then when Brady was traded, they mess they called me that day, and they're like, "You're not gonna believe this," and I'm like, "Well." Still hate my team? I don't think so. I think nobody <laughs> hates my team anymore. You chose the right team. Yeah. To say that. And I invested said, in the long run. The yeah. long investment. And he said that he's not going nowhere in the post game. So you guys got him for another season. Exactly. Right? Um, but thank you very much, so much for uh, joining me today, Matt. Thanks really, for having me. I really do appreciate it. And I can't wait to hear the new album as soon as you release yeah. it. We better get on that now. <laughs> yeah, you better get on that. But thanks so much. I hope you have a wonderful night. You too. Thank you again. I saw the girl on the bar dance the night away Like there's no tomorrow